Well, hello and welcome, everyone. This is Ben Martinek, your host of the Catholic Money Mastermind podcast uh, with the Catholic Financial Planners Network. Super excited to be here with you, as always. Love doing this show. It's one of the best things I do in my life. And one of the coolest parts about it is I get to talk with other financial advisors who have just joined the Catholic Financial Planners Network, Anthony Guzman uh, being one of those. Uh, Anthony, thanks for joining me on today's call. I'd like to introduce you a little bit or maybe have you introduce yourself. So uh, do you mind just sharing what kind of firm you're you're from and where you're at and just, I don't know, some of that those fun details someone might be interested in knowing? Of course, Ben. And again, thanks so much for having me on the show. And uh, it's been a joy to be part of the network. So uh, my name is Anthony Guzman. I am a fee-only fiduciary financial planner. A lot of buzzwords there, but I am basically a CFO for currently about 50 households and a growing number are those who are faith-based, Christian or Catholic, those who want their values to be aligned in the types of plans that they are building and they don't know um, how to do it on their own. And so um, I'm helping them uh, along the way with building these fi financial plans, revising those plans, providing education, and ultimately just trying to provide a little bit of peace of mind. And so that's what I do. It's kind of a, a passion or dream job, if you will, um, but uh, anyways, I'm just glad to be here today. So thank you. Yeah, it's great having you, Anthony. And so folks, you can find Anthony again at Catholic Financial Planners uh, Network, uh, the CatholicFinancialPlanners.com. And then Anthony's with the Pioneer Wealth Management Group in Austin, Texas. So another Texan, uh, we have a few of those hailing the, uh, another Texan is out of Dallas. So, you know, I don't know, how many Texans can you have in a network before it becomes too many is the question I asked. You, you got any thoughts hey, on that? It's <laughs> <big state. laughs> big state, all right. All right, well, you said that there, it sounds very Texan of you. Every time I go to Texas, they're all always about how big they are. So <laughs> I love Texas, got good family there and the like. Well, Anthony, we're going to be talking about a, a topic that, uh, you know, as you're working, you know, as I work with clients, you work with clients, it's a, kind of a front and center topic that we have. You know, we, we'll go over it in our first meeting and, and it's what's con commonly called, at least within our business or industry, uh, life planning questions. And the notion of these life planning questions, they really come from a gentleman called George Kinder. At least many people are influenced or inspired by what he wrote in his books. Um, you know, he worked previously as a financial services uh, professional. Uh, these life planning questions really hold centerpiece because the notion is, is that we really don't know what to do with your money uh, until we've kind of figured out what the game plan is. Like, and what is it that you want to accomplish? Like, it's hard to tell me what investment to put your money in if I'm not sure what this investment's going to be accomplishing. And so, like, let's, what do you want to accomplish with your money? And then, that, you know, a, a bigger question, and that's really, what do you want to accomplish with your life? Like, I mean, what's your, what's your life all about? And, you know, what's really interesting about that, Anthony, is we just had another episode with Lance Peters in which one of the things we stumbled upon is, like, one of the fundamental roles that uh, a good financial advisor does for you, especially as a Catholic or a Christian, is help you to realize or define your mission in life and what God has given mm -hmm. or set out for you. So this really, you know, goes hand in hand with that conversation. And now what we want to do is talk about, uh, you know, those maybe some very specific questions that you sh uh, should be considering asking yourself, uh, either with an advisor or just, you know, between you and your spouse, you know, internally, like what, what are the things that we're we're accomplishing. So, you know, before we maybe get into the questions right away, Anthony, I'm just kind of curious, like what's been some of your feedback or experience with working with clients, you know, as we raise maybe these life planning questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an excellent question. And uh, there's so many folks who may come to us first with, um, here's this one situation that I'm in, can we solve this transition? And uh, and a lot of times there's, you know, some merit to it, maybe there's a deadline and we can address it. But we got to go all the way back and we have to uh, gather all of this information. And a lot of it's financial, but so much of it, so much more of it um, is quite frankly emotional. And it's understanding what is the motivation. It's, the, it's asking the why instead of the what and the how. And I think, yeah, George Kinder does a great job with those life questions, which I'm excited to kind of explore and tease out, um, trying to be an example. But um, I, I just think in, in in so many cases, people come to a financial advisor with a certain question and the good advisors are maybe hesitating to answer and instead responding with that question with further questions right back at them to really understand that why. Yeah, I mean, we get this all the time, especially this is, tends to be most prominent with investments. Like, hey, I've got some money. 
what what do you recommend? And you know, if I was trying to give you a hot stock to pick or you know some mutual fund that seemed to be doing well, well, we'll just shove it in there and hopefully it does well. And you know, to some degree, people maybe just come to us to they just want to get money, they just want to earn money. But you know, you know, the, the deeper underlining pin here is like, what what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want that money to do? How soon do you need it? Do you want it in just a couple of years, couple months? 20, 30 years from now, is this for your grandkids? Is this as an inheritance? Like all of those specific investments really changes maybe what kind of investment we would be putting uh, that money into. There's just a full spectrum of possibilities. Like, I, I don't know, we're, you can put it in any number of places. Where do, you, where do you want me to put it unless we answer these questions? Like, I, your, your guess is good as mine, right? Have you come across yeah. that? Because I, I just know in some client experiences, it's like, they think I should just know, but if I have a certain dollar amount, I should just know what you would do with that money. And it's like, well, I, I need to see the broader context, you know, to, to give better, better advice or guidance. So what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Just, just that uh, other industries, it makes more sense where it's, um, it, if it would be very strange if someone comes to a doctor and, Hey, I, I need you to recommend a prescription for whatever. So-and-so medication. That's like, what, who, who are you? We need to establish a relationship. Is this for you, a family member? What is the, the purpose behind all of it, it doesn't quite work that way. Right. It's the same way where I, I, I need an investment recommendation, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's uh, who, who really are you is what, where we go back to. What are we trying to accomplish? And we ultimately get to respond to those questions. It's just the, um, in, in our, in our realm, we want to do what is best for them. And a lot of it uh, is a process to getting to first know them a little bit more. Yeah, I love that. I like I love that you bring that up because yeah, in medicine, you, you unless maybe you have a doctor in the family, and I'm sure it's not supposed to happen this way, but you know, hush hush. <laughs> but you know, unless you have a doctor in the family, like they're not just going to write you a prescription. Like you know, they, we need to do an evaluation here a little further and determine that that's the the, the right course of action. And you know, investment selection amongst other uh, financial advice is certainly uh, certainly the same way. Well, so so what's some of that evaluation? Well, let's kick it off, I think, maybe with this first question. I'll read it out to you folks uh, to hear it. What I love about it, maybe just as a preface to it, is uh, you know, it's it's funny. Like to know what to do with your money, we almost have to imagine maybe what it is is if all your goals were already hit. And like what would that life look like? And so that's what this question is really seeking to capture. Is like what would life look like if you did accomplish everything you wanted to accomplish and you just kind of meditated, you stayed in that place you know, what would that be? So, uh, you know, the question typically, this is, you know, you'll see variations on this, but I want you to imagine uh, that you are financially secure, uh, that you have enough money to satisfy all of your needs now and in the future. Uh, the question is, if this is the situation you find yourself in, you know, how would you live your life? Uh, would you change anything? And then we normally encourage you to, to dream a little, because uh, oftentimes most of us don't find ourselves in that situation. So would you change your life and how would you do it? So let's, uh, you know, Anthony, I'd love to hear your own response to this, but I just invite the audience to, if you found yourself where you were financially secure and you had enough money to satisfy all your needs, both now and in the future, and we took money out of the equation and it wasn't a concern any longer or a worry or a trigger, you know, if just like, oh man, always money, always money worries and concerns. Like that's not there anymore. What would you do with your life? <laughs> It's such a great question. And, uh, as I, th as I think about it, the, when the money part of the conversation is removed, I think where, where it's taking me first is, okay, there's no more money, but now I need to spend my time well. It's the uh -huh. question of what am I doing with my time? Which then begs the question of who am I spending this time with? Some may, some folks maybe um, don't necessarily, you know, they can spend time traveling, you know, uh, they don't necessarily need to think about who they might meet or, uh, but it comes down to as far as how I'm spending my time and who, who's with me. I mean, first my spouse comes to mind and my four-year-old and my two-year-old. So I'm, and I have my nuclear family with still some approximation to um, both of our extended families as well. So I know I'm spending a lot of time with them. Um, there's a question of where if money is no longer um, a concern and it's um, definitely a happy place. I'm thinking of um, a few places in mind. 
um, that is more in nature, more in the you know, more in the outdoors. Uh, we are, you know, not bringing our phone or watch with us. We are, you know, out on the lake, fishing or kayaking, or um, and being just present to each other, and then also um, meeting new people, um, cooking together. I see. I see a lot of um, of sort of like a, a unplanned Saturday, if you will. Um, where we don't, we're not in a rush to be anywhere. There isn't any place that we are, uh, uh, you know, obligated to be. It is just being in the presence of those that you love, family, friends, and then doing things that I enjoy doing. Uh, whether it is, you know, outdoor based or other hobbies. Um, I think that's where my, my mind is going first, but I'll put the question right back on you uh, before I think of, where I go from there. I think that's, so thanks for the honest uh, answer there, Anthony. It, it's great. I mean, a common response we do get from many of our clients is, well, I would, I'd spend more time with my family or I would travel more regularly or gosh, I, I, at least I wouldn't work as much. Uh, but, you know, there's quite a few who would say I would still work. And I, I think as I'm just thinking of myself and the answers I've heard, you know, various clients give to this, I, I would be in the same position. I, you know, there's no way I would not work. Like I, like if money was completely not a concern, I would be working in some level. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love my wife and I love my girls, but I, uh, an expression that I've been introduced here in the last few years that really resonates with me is, uh, you know, I married my wife for life, but I didn't marry her for lunch. <laughs> a lot of people get a big kunk, a kick out of that. Mm -hmm. But I think that's true. Like, I mean, I love spending time with her, but, you know, she would want some separation from me and, and probably myself to her as well. It's good. You know, it's, they say uh, separation bring, uh, brings fondness to the heart, right? Makes the heart grow fonder. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I, I've always tended to be a bit of a bookworm. I think I'd spend quite a bit of my time, uh, smoking my pipe, reading some books, maybe d deepening foreign languages, uh, you know, enjoying the day, having, having some workouts, but also, you know, working, I, just not juggling as much. I, I, as I look at my life, it's like, golly, it's spent a lot of time juggling a lot of things, a lot of responsibility, a lot of things going on. And, you know, many times though, all that juggling is economically driven. It's, because it's just part of mm -hmm. some of the requirements of running a job and having a business and being involved in the way I am. Sure, I sure wouldn't mind if there was a few things I pulled out and I didn't have to juggle uh, quite so many. But I think the last thing that would really stand out to me is I'd probably still work. I like what I do and I enjoy how I bring impact to the lives of my clients. But uh, I'd also look at other ways to bring impact to others. You know, I, I grew up in a bit of a challenged upbringing. And so it's just near and dear to my heart not having had very much in my early years, uh, just knowing mm -hmm. what that's like and wanting to do what I can to others to help give, you know, to put them on a good uh, course trajectory into the future and and put them on a, on a strong path. It, it's real meaningful work for me. And, you know, I think when I was young, I probably would have had aspirations to change and save the world. And now that I've got a few white hairs in my beard, I realize, you know, probably because, you know, now that I have those white hairs, that that's not quite such a realistic goal. A lot of this stuff is out of my hands and in the Lord's hands. But, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any work that I would do here to change the world. But, you know, if I can change at least yeah. the lives of a few people, you know, that's that's pretty meaningful work. And, you know, we'll trust that that all plays into God's greater plan for me and, and my life. I'll add, um, I'll add one childhood memory as well as what, what you wanted to be when you grew up and uh, how it fits in today and why I may agree with your, um, with your idea of, of, of continuing that work, which was, um, building out this kind of shopping mall that I would be, uh, CEO of. And within this mall, if you will, um, every store would provide some type of service for free. Mm -hmm. And it was that I was helping as many people as possible that came to this store. Um, and where they, if they had trouble buying a vehicle, for example, they could go and get their vehicle or, um, you know, a Macy's without a price tag on the, on the, on the clothing racks. And it was just this concept of helping folks. I think a lot of it had to do again with my own low income family background of just like, what if we didn't have to? And what, knowing that we could provide that in some kind of way, um, would be great. And how I'm, I'm in a way able to do that. It just looks a little bit differently. It's through the means of holistic financial life planning where uh, I'm offering different services and techniques and savings. Um, I, I think it's the the more grown up 
version of this elementary school get, get everything for free. Um, but uh, anyways, it, it's it, I'm glad you bring that up. That it's uh, it, just the the fact that work and helping others is a is a big part of what we do. Yeah, very much so. I mean, that resonates in my own heart for sure. And you know, it's sometimes it's a little difficult, but we have to charge people for our fees. But I, at the end of the day, I've got a family too, and I've got employees, and so if we don't charge anything, I you know they're not going to be around them. I'm not going to feed them very much. So, I mean, yeah, fees are, it's just a, a necessity of it. And that, uh, you know, fees can get in the way of whether or not people can get the help because it's maybe something they can't, uh, they can't easily afford. But I think it is worth noting. I, I, plenty of advisors I know are, are definitely driven with the desire to help people and make a difference, a positive change in their lives. Uh, so, you know, let's take some time, folks, you know, as an audience, you know, if you haven't, like, what would you imagine? It's an, it's an odd place to be. To imagine, you know, what if money was no longer an issue? Because a lot of our decisions can be driven by these money concerns. And if we just take money out of it, like what you might be doing today wouldn't be what you would do otherwise if money's not that driving concern. And so part of building out and living uh, an ideal life, perhaps even living living the mission that God has given you, as I chatted with that other uh, in that other podcast episode, is, uh, you know, not letting money be the driving reason for why we do or not do something like it just doesn't deserve that kind of place in our lives. It's not our idol uh, and it's not our God, as you know. So maybe as another question though, and I know this one might hit uh, close, ho close to home, Anthony, just some of the challenges you've had in your life in this last year. And this is always a provocative question. So we're moving on to one of the new other George Kinder questions. This is one that if not uncommonly, you'll, you'll see someone tearing up on because it really hits home. And I know when I've asked and thought of this question, it'll hit home for me too. Uh, so, you know, just to, to play with us, you know, imagine today that you went to your doctor and they shock you with the news that you have only one day left to live. Uh, no, notice what feelings arise as you confront your very real mortality. And now reflecting on your life, both all your accomplishments to date and all the things you have left unfinished or undone, ask yourself, you know, what did I miss? Uh, what did I not get to be? What did I not get to do? Like, man, wow. I mean, we all know that we're going to die, right? <laughs> it is, like, that's not a newsflash, I think, to anybody. I've got, you know, my six-year-old and eight-year-old, and they're fully aware that someday they're going to die too. So I think we get introduced to this early on in our lives. Uh, but we don't always live really with this focus or awareness that today or tomorrow, like really, like really tomorrow could be my last day. And that's it. You know, that's it. It's over. And gosh, that does. That hits you every time. It hits you like, wow, what? What would, am I happy with how my life has been if tomorrow's it? I don't know. What, what comes to mind for you, Anthony? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a question that really this past March, we um, has kind of been forced upon us with my wife's recent diagnosis of stage four cancer. And so I'm thinking of the questions addressed to me in this moment, but in a lot of ways this year, we've been um, provided that type of announcement and um, the feelings that we've received, one has been a lot of just, um, yes, there's an initial shock to it um, or in, in denial. And I think in a grieving process that there's there's these steps where you get towards acceptance. Um, and I think that's a great place to be, but nor should you um, rush to that acceptance. But um, where there's this deep desire for closeness um, to those that mean the most to you. Um, and it's the um, now instead of my decades and years, I'm, I'm valuing minutes and hours at this point, um, especially if we are, again, given this announcement um, theoretically or in some other kind of way of one day left. It's now that that one day matters a little bit more. Um, and so it's, it's the, okay, how, how do we use this time this remaining time well, but it also brings up all of the motions of the, how we haven't had this um, view in the past of where, especially being younger, it's we're thinking, oh, I'm still in my 20s, 30s, 40s. And, you know, we have that kind of mindset um, because we kind of avoid this mortality question. Um, and so the first one is a desire to get close to those that I love. Um, but then uh, there's also the, um, all of the, there's a reminder of all the blessings along the way that sure, I, there are some days where 
I maybe chose um, to work one evening when I really should have been um, with the family or um, there's, you know, I, we, I wish we wouldn't have spent money in this certain way and we just use that towards uh, an experience for, for our family, whatever it is. Um, the, those, some of those regrets are there, but more importantly, it's the, um, it's the reality of, wow, I've, I've made it this far and that already is a gift. Um, and recognizing that no matter in what state we are, I think it's a great place to start. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, none of us, you know, you know, none of us get out of here alive, right. As they say, as a, as a joke, right. So like it's going to happen and ultimately it's in the Lord's hands and we have to trust that uh, his promises will be fulfilled, uh, as, as time goes along, you know, and really in, in his time, you know, not, not in ours and part of that fulfillment may mean that something takes place where one of us does pass sooner than the other. And hopefully that's also still part, that's part of his plan, his desire and what he wants for us. And all we could do is really give, give ourselves over and say, yes, you know, if this is what you will of me, then yes, I will. I'm here. You know, I, I, I hear you, Lord, and I, I do your, I do your will. Uh, really like the response of, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a biblical uh, figure. Is it Saul? I think it's Saul. Like the third time he awakes in the night, he's called. He keeps he keeps passing. Samuel. Samuel, that's who it is. Samuel. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it was somebody. Yeah, we could keep that in there. Whatever the fellows want to do with that. But um, yeah, you know, we all we could do is response and say, "Here I am, Lord. I've come to do Your will." Right. Um, so, I, it's you know, we don't we don't have we don't have the ability to decide these things it's not entirely entirely up to us and so what all we could do really is just to give uh, a daily awareness you know an accounting or an examination of you know how have, how have i spent this day and have i spent it in a way that uh that i am satisfied you know both with myself but you know that would be satisfying uh to the lord too and and then trust, you know, whatever in the ups and the downs and the struggles and the accomplishments and the achievements, this whole mixture of that life is and its variations from day to day, that, you know, that this is good, you know, that good can come from this and good can be made of this. And, you know, we can still rejoice and celebrate whatever may come. It's just this great song that really comes to mind for me of, you know, oh God, beyond all praising and which one of the lines at the tail end of the second lyric is just regardless of or effectively, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember it quite word for word, but, you know, in our daily trials or tribulations or challenges, no matter what come or way, we will rise again the next day and sing your praises, Lord. And it's just this really beautiful, mm -hmm. goosebumpy, empowering statement of this, I'm here, like, I'm, and this is what it's all about for me. But, you mm -hmm. know, I get busy, uh, you get busy, and then we lose track and we lose focus and, you know, maybe impatient or short-tempered or annoyed or irritated or whatever it is that something didn't go quite the way you thought it should go today and hopefully this pulls us back in and maybe more specifically just to the questions like some of the questions that george is asking for whatever word i don't believe he's christian so these aren't necessarily christian questions which is fine i still think they're good for us and as christians we can baptize anything so <laughs> yeah ultimately we believe that uh what did uh you know what did i miss is there anything that comes to mind to you that if you were to pass away tomorrow anthony that you feel like you would you would miss or not get to do Mm -hmm. miss or not get to do i would think especially with the mortality question from the christian perspective is where who is my hope in and um did i get enough time spending time with the lord here on earth and so a lot of that come comes to mind of you know times when i was able to go to daily mass for example and you know through the busyness of life it's harder to get to that daily mass or that holy hour as it used to be. Um, and so there's that missing or wishing to, um, for that to take place. But there's also the hope of um, what is to come. And I think in all of George Kinder's questions, he's asking the question, how will you measure your life? And there's a book that I've uh, mm. read that it has that very title. And it's, we can, you know, even as financial advisors or um, uh, more, maybe financial focus folks, they may measure it based on a net worth or they may base it off of, you know, um, the possessions they have or fame or just, you know, recognition, these type of things. But 
um, he basically this book debunks so much of it, and it, it it's 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 very Christian in its origin uh, in its um, in its mission, which is really love is the only way that we can truly measure um, success or measure our life. That we can't really get disappointed if it's um, if we measured like how how well did I love today, mm. um, whether that was sacrificially through my job or by taking out the trash or um, you know, doing whatever it is, it's, it's, um, how do we best do that? Um, and I think that's what, uh, what is being asked, um, when, when he presents those questions. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, you know, it, I don't know. It's, it's a funny response. I mean, there have been, I've had clients who have really been like, wow, move. Like I've got to change. Like this is like if I die tomorrow, what I have done so far in my life is not what I wanted to accomplish. And I need, I need these many times it's like evoked through a career change. Like, yeah, I, I got to get out of this job. It's actually been rather surprising. It doesn't happen all the time by any means. Most many times, actually, I'd say a lot of clients come back and say, Hey, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel great. You know, it'd be sad to die tomorrow. Probably the most common things I, I'd miss seeing my girls or my kids grow up. I'd miss growing old with my spouse, my wife, my, my husband. But there's quite a few folks I will say who come back and say, "Yeah, you know, I'm I'm satisfied. I'm happy with where where my life is at." But there's been some who are like, "Wow, no! Now that you pose that question to me, like I got to, I I can't keep doing. It's really clear to me I can't keep doing what I've been doing. This isn't this isn't good." Which and I think you know this is like, "Wow, okay, that's awesome." But we're able to come to that realization so so quickly. I think I think my my sentiments on this would echo a lot of uh, a lot of my clients have. I, I certainly have had uh, issues in my life where there's some regrets or wishes things had had gone differently or maybe I would be where I'm at would played out or I'd be further along than what I am. But if I had to really say, like, am I mad or sad or upset and I only got a day tomorrow, I I think I'd just be grateful. If I if I would hope. I would if I was really forced to say, look, man, you're, this is it. You've got tomorrow, I just just pull the family and give them all a bunch of hugs and kisses and just, you know, really rest in gratefulness for for the life that God's given me. It's where I would uh, hope my heart would be, and I think that's that is how I would respond to that. So, just gratefulness. Life, so much of life is awesome. It does have its hardship, but a lot of it's just awesome, and we should just, uh, you know, part of an awesome God. So, and I, I hear the next life is even better. Yeah, so. yeah, amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> it does, it does change your thoughts or perspective on this, right? A belief uh, and the hope for for an afterlife uh, and the resurrection of the body. It kind of makes the death. The question of death, not quite so, you know, well, just not so final. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. well, another part, you know, it's just another part. Well, so let's talk a little bit, I think, Anthony, as we're, you know, wrapping some of this up, some practical tips for uh, maybe changing habits. You know, you have this uh, idea that I, I, I don't practice. I, I really want to hear more about it and learn about it and see about incorporating it. It's this holistic examination of conscience. And so, uh, is this a daily exercise? Maybe as we get this underway, like what? Could you share a little bit more about what this examination is? Sure, um, and it, it can be implemented or checked on on a daily basis. But I think this is kind of more of a sit down, whether it's individually or possibly with a spouse. Um, but uh, when we use this word holistic examination, it's it's what brings what makes you whole. We need to look at all aspects of life and. Um, within finances, there are multiple fa- facets of that, but even your finances are only one part of you, um, and there are a lot more important parts as well. So this is an examination of how am I doing in all of the places, um, both how's my spiritual life, how is my physical health, um, what is my emotional state, um, again, how are what's my financial um, situation at the moment, vocationally where um where am i how can i be better or what steps do i need to take to to find that vocation um and then also just socially and um you know what is my identity whether it's i am a brother friend cousin um aunt whatever it is and it's in context with kind of the mystical body of christ if you will and um in in that examination we're figuring out where where am I lacking or where am I, uh, where do I lack that balance of, you know, Hey, things are going really well for me career wise or, um, financially, these are, these things are great, but 
hey, uh, my relationship with um, my youngest daughter could be could be worked on, or um, I, I really need to spend more time in my community or whatever it, it comes up. It's just the it, it's taking an, an account of all of these things and just asking the question as because um, it's not going to be a perfect balance, um, but it's it, it's what's important to you and what needs a little bit of attention um, is is kind of the the point of that examination. And once you identify maybe the one or two areas, especially when this Advent season, looking forward to the uh, to the new year, um, can we base goals on that and then measure that on a more daily basis? On hey, I can work on these two areas. Um, did I did I work on that area? In, the, in this way. So this could be used with a journal um, or a conversation or someone to keep you accountable. But that's the idea of a holistic examination of conscience. Yeah. You know what I love about this, Anthony, what's really sticking out to me is like, we know this. I think people know this. But I mean, there's studies that support it too, is that money doesn't make us happy, right? So if we just center and zero in on like, hey, let's get our finances to be super strong and doing great and everything's running perfectly. I, we could accomplish that, and it's a doable goal, and we could put that as our top priori- our priority and have everything center on that. But, I mean, if your goal is happiness, like, there's no guarantee that accomplishing that is going to make you happy. In fact, there's a lot of reason to think that it, it wouldn't uh, make you happy. And I think to your your point, like, this is like happiness is a multifaceted arrangement, and it comes through many forms and trying to check a lot of boxes on a lot of different areas in which we could then circle back and say, okay, I, I'm content or I'm fulfilled, I'm satisfied. And, you know, finances, you know, has its importance. You know, we've got it included in this list, but it's just one of peers. It's not the, it's not the only one and it's definitely not the primary one. And I don't know if it ever should be uh, really, honestly, the main, main one. Uh, perhaps, I don't know. I mean, we have scriptural passages that give obviously good importance to stewardship and taking care of your wealth and your money. And, and you know, to those who've been given small matters uh, and have done well, you know, they'll be given large matters. And so... Th- how you manage your finances could be an opportunity for you to manage other other things. So that it has its value. But yeah, I mean, as you have listed out here, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the vocational, the social, like, you know, how are you doing on those too? You know, is that is is that is that going well uh, for you? Uh, I, I gotta be honest, at least as in terms of clients, you know, my role and perhaps I'm I'm their financial advisor, right? They're working with me on this financial advisory space. You know, we center on on finances, but at least as their financial advisor, I should be like, hey, there are other you know aspects to your life. What are you doing for those? And maybe I'm not the professional to help you in this regard, but let's get some professional uh, to help help in that regard. Perhaps as a pivot, yeah. like you, you've got this notion of a board of directors, you know, for your help. Like, who who would you recommend? Like, who should you else also recruit to help you in this holistic examination of conscience? And the reason why I I enjoy our job is because when we're asking about what's important to them, we then structure our finances to help fund those things. So the board of directors concept is just, and we're very heavily influenced by who um, who formed us, who we're spending time with, and uh, we we can do this exercise even now for all the listeners of just listing out who are those important players in my life currently. Um, and, uh, I'm sure you're able to, to identify a friend, maybe a mentor, um, if you don't already have one, a spiritual director, someone that's providing that type of, um, of help or guidance, um, even just, you know, your tax professional, your CPA, your legal, um, and if you don't already have a therapist, someone checking in on your own mental and emotional health, um, definitely including some of those. And so, they don't have to be official titles. It, it could be um, that, hey, m- my spouse plays this one role <laughs> um, or, um, you know, there can be people who uh, play these roles indirectly, but uh, we want to make sure that we you have a good board of directors around you um, where if you feel like you're missing, um, you're missing help. Look, let, let's say you're stuck in your career. Um a lot of times we, or if you're, you you feel like you're stuck, a lot of what I, I do is say, hey, can we allocate some of our budget to get a career coach? Um, that's not my expertise. I can definitely help when we have different job offers and review your options there. But um, 
is there somebody that you can talk to to get help in that one area? Uh, parenting can be an example. Um, it's, it's hard for us to really have expertise in everything. Um, and you can try and do it yourself and fix it, fix the door, but not everybody can fix that front door. And it might end up more messed up if you do it on your own without asking for help. <laughs> right. Uh, and so we just want to encourage and, and direct the, the funds to be able to support those things. And not everything even requires um, money to, um, to, to work on these things. Yeah, I just, what's great about this, and it's not an, a topic we've really centered on, so it's just really relevant and timely, and I hope the audience is benefiting from, is, you know, it, it, we, it takes a village, I think is what comes to mind for me. It takes a village, mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we need networks for social animals. Uh, you know, finances aren't the only thing. You know, we can do the work we do maybe in your, your relationship or your life as, as an advisor as far as that's concerned, but, you know, uh, you know, this is kind of one of those secrets of retirement, too, that, you know, even if you have a secure retirement, people can still find themselves depressed because it matters, you know, more, you know, there's other aspects of your life that even if the money's taken care of, you can still be less unsatisfied and unfulfilled and be struggling. And so, you know, who are these other people who can help bring you into fulfillment? Again, uh, Anthony's got this great list. I'll, I'll, I'll read it off here just for uh, everyone's reference. But, you know, it could be a, a best friend, a mentor. Well, and or, I mean, these are all a whole, a whole combination. We're not looking at just one person here. So a best friend, a mentor, a spiritual director, maybe a tax professional, a legal professional, uh, you know, a, a therapist, uh, perhaps even we don't have included on this. I'll, I'll add uh, a gym trainer <laughs> or, or, you know, a physical, That's right. a physical coach, someone, <laughs> someone to kick you in the butt, you know, make you do an extra few pushups when you'd rather not, you know, we all, we obviously all mm -hmm. need that sort of thing in our lives. So. Yeah, this is this is great. So I think you know, as we wrap it up, Andy, there there's one last uh, resource that you like to use personally, and I think you recommend to your clients. We'll kick this yes. uh, kick this out again, folks. You can connect with other great advisors too, not just with Anthony, but everyone at the Catholic uh, Planners Network uh, dot com, Catholic Financial Planners. I <laughs> I should know our own website, and I sometimes fib it up. So there you go. Look at me. But Catholic Financial Planners dot com. Be sure to check out the the, the other advisors. But what what's this uh, last resource that you recommend and you know, how has it impacted or been a benefit in your life? Uh, I'm a fan of free resources and uh, the the name of it is yearcompass.com. And it is a very unique uh, resource that I look um, to and even our firm um, uses uh, professionally, but then they encourage us to do this uh, personally is um, it's a review of the past year. Um, and there is a lot of prompts and reflection questions where you can print it out, take it to somewhere, you know, in a good environment where you can spend some time, a couple hours maybe, uh, looking at the year um, before, what could have, you know, what are we proud of, what could we change? And it's, it's, it's a, definitely a reflection process. And then simultaneously, the second half of this kind of pamphlet resource is more of that forward looking kind of like new year's resolutions but without the um I, I i don't say those words because there's the the concept of well maybe by february or march those resolutions don't take place but um it, it's this resource of okay we're looking back we're reflecting and then now we're moving forward uh with this you know planning uh the, the following year resource and i think what you'll come to you know after doing this type of exercise, uh, what what we're pointing to, which our faith kind of gives us examples, um, and financial life planning is also pointing towards this, is um, a rule of life is ultimately what we're recommending. And um, I don't know if Ben, you want to talk more about what that rule of life looks like in the monast in the monastic sense, but it's it's the fact that there are different different religious groups or organizations um, where they have they profess vows where they have a certain charism and things that they stand for. Um, because we're so unique, we not everyone's going to have the same type of rule of life, but it's the statement of what's important to us, how do we spend our time, uh, and what is our gift to the world. And if we think about um, the listener, we all have this unique calling, even if you're in a similar industry or in a similar place with kids or anything like that, it's what is my unique calling? How are we going to do things differently? Differently. What is our mission statement? And uh, it's great to. This is a great resource to help you get a rule of life, uh, a rule of life, and just know um, 
the this rule of life is a living document, you can go in and make revisions as as uh, life evolves. Yeah, I love that. It's great that you've pulled that back, Anthony, too, to my own prior time as a religious, you know, and so for those who aren't familiar with some you know, Latin-based terms, rule of life, uh, the, the term uh, regular comes from this or is, denotes it. It's regular is, is Latin for rule. And so, uh, you know, really what's a rule of life? It's a regular discipline is probably a quicker and easy way to explain or describe it. And it's a, it's a scheme of commitments that you make both individually, but then in the broader context as a community living out this life. Uh, communal life of this is what we are going to do every day and these are our commitments this is what's expected of us these are the standards these are the expectations and you can't do everything and then there's a whole lot of good things to do and so various communities center on and say these are the things we're going to do uh, maybe in like almost business terms we'd call it a niche although i can tell you no religious probably thinks of it in that way <laughs> but uh, <laughs> business wise you'd call it a niche but these are the arc we'd call it your charism uh you know your apostolate like this is what I'm, what we're going to be about, and the things that we're mm-hmm. committing to are supporting that end or that endeavor, and then you live it. You know, every day it's it's regular. This is what you do. This is what your your discipline is. This is what your commitment is, and each day you you fulfill that. At least that you strive to, and it's it, it is a beautiful thing. It's just so funny. Our society is so anti uh, rules or standards or expectations, and we all want you know, like leave me to be me and let me make up my own mind and determinations and, and the like. And it's all, all I think that leads you to is being terribly unhappy and dissatisfied. Like, there's a lot of beauty and a lot of wholesomeness and a lot of goodness uh, committing to a standard that's not your own and say, I'm going to live that. Uh, and partially, why is that so valuable and important? It's because it isn't mine. You know, it's somebody else's. Mm-hmm. It doesn't belong to me. And there's like the sacrifice of my will, which is very much part and parcel of religious life too, of the vow of obedience. So couldn't recommend that uh, highly enough. I will say I'm not as accustomed to such practices always um, outside of religious life. Um, we do have our daily commitments of what we strive for. And I think each family should, but I, I've never really, it's kind of funny that you bring this up. It's not what I would have thought of as my rule of life, but now you're kind of giving a fresh set of eyes even for myself on on this matter. And I, uh, what I would encourage maybe is just some final thoughts for everybody in the show is, you know, if you don't have maybe a set of daily commitments that you make for uh, yourself, for your spouse, for your family, uh, to, to ponder on what those might be, you know, as part of these life-changing questions that we're, we're providing to you. Like, what is it that I do want to commit to doing, you know, every day and seeing this is, this is, this is going to constitute me. This is going to be my identity. It's going to make up who I am and what I do. Uh, it's, that gets to be really powerful stuff, uh, to get behind that, stand behind it, and especially if you can do it in context of other people and be part of a community and even you get accountability. These are like just really wonderful things. So, so all that all that said, Anthony, do you have uh, maybe some final uh, thoughts that you'd like to leave with our with our audience? Yeah, just know that there's the there's the big takeaway, which is also getting help, and a lot of what we do is um, provide that help, whether it's um, through our financial planning conversations and and recommendations, but in a lot of ways, it could be um, let's put you in contact with someone else that can help, and so. Um, we, we a lot of what we're what we want to recommend is just um, if you um, if you have that game plan or find a new direction that you want to go towards and you don't know where to turn, um, definitely rely on your board of directors, but consider a financial planner um, to be part of that board of directors to help you um, take the next steps to that right direction. Well, Anthony, I couldn't say it any better, folks. Yeah, go check out uh, Catholic. Fi- uh financialplanners.com uh, to find out more members. We're going to the network every month. It's awesome to see. Again, the network is all about finding Catholic advisors and Catholic clients and bringing them together. Of course, you don't have to be Catholic. If you're Christian, we'll love you too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it is specifically, you know, we're, we're marketing for Catholics, but all, all are welcome. Uh, you know, we're here to live our values, live out our faith and, and live out our, you know, our calling uh, as God has, has asked of us. Um, so, and then if for anyone who wants to find out more about you, uh, Anthony, where, where should they go? Sure. Um, you can definitely visit um, the CFPN network uh, and use the Find Advisors tool to find me. Um, you can also research my firm at pioneerwealth.com. Um, you can also shoot me an email at anthony at pioneerwealth.com. So 
find me on LinkedIn. Uh, there are multiple ways uh, to do so. And I'd love to have a consultation just to talk more. Awesome. Well, thanks, Anthony, for joining us today. Thanks for the topic. And it was just great. Thank you, audience, for listening to us uh, and uh, being here and supporting uh, what it is we're doing. We're hoping you're finding great value. Please uh, refer and direct and spread the word for what we're here in our podcast. Uh, you can refer us uh, and, and give us a review. We, we would love all that support from you. Until then, we ask God's blessings upon each and every one of you. God bless.